very easy with our busy, hectic, chaotic, crazy lives to just say exercise. I don't have time for exercise. Who has time for exercise? Seriously, I have a life to live. And you throw your hands up. Hi, I'm Chris. Welcome to Plant Fit Meg. If you're new here, I hope you'll take a look around the channel at some other videos. I make videos about weight loss, plant-based recipes, and a healthy lifestyle. In this video, we're going to talk about beginner fitness and how to start an exercise routine and incorporating movement into your day. If you haven't seen one of my previous videos about rebooting and revamping your New Year's resolutions, I'm calling it Accountable April, and you can still join in. It, even though we're late into the month, you can still join. Use the hashtag Accountable April and the hashtag Reboot Your Resolution. Tag me at Plant Fit Meg. I'd love to see what you're up to in terms of exercise or food or meal prepping or batch cooking or any other thing that you're getting into and starting something new or making a new goal, a new habit, a new routine. I'll link the video up here if you haven't seen it yet and I'd love to connect with you guys about it. Chris and I have very different perspectives on fitness. If you saw our previous video about fitness related yeah. things and our opinions on the gym and such like that, uh, you'll know that we have perspectives. Uh, I'll, I'll link it here so you can check it out if you haven't seen it already. I think it's entitled, My Husband Hates the Gym? Yeah, mark. I have strong feelings. <laughs> anyway, check out that video for information and for some a fun chat uh, <laughs> between us about fitness in the gym. Yeah. So in this video, talking about incorporating movement into your day, making it fun and getting started, even if you are a terrified beginner, even if you've never exercised before, or if you're someone who has exercised in the past and then got out of the routine for whatever reason, and you're trying to get back into it. Yeah. Or you're a person like me, like Meg said, I don't do much exercise in a traditional way. So we're going to kind of go through that. Yeah. Yeah. So the first thing to do is choose activities that you know you already enjoy. So if you already have a type of physical activity, any kind of movement that you already enjoy, do that thing. Yeah. <laughs> Choose that, do that. Don't think that you need to run or you need to lift weights or you need to do a specific yeah. thing for fitness and wellness. As long as you're getting your body moving, that's great. And whatever it is that you enjoy, you should do that because if you enjoy it, you'll actually do it. This is exactly how I get my movement in. <laughs> I don't go out of my way to do exercise-y things. I enjoy cycling, I enjoy skateboarding, I enjoy climbing stuff, um, and walking actually is very simple and I enjoy doing it. Mm -hmm. So those are the ways that I decide to get my body moving. I like dancing, I don't feel like I'm a good dancer, so I do that in the privacy of my kitchen. <laughs> Um, but they're all great, simple ways of things that I simply enjoy, and it's a great way to get active. So Yeah, and so for me, when the gyms are open, right now the gyms in our area are closed. I am a gym goer, and I do like to go to the gym, but the gym has been open and closed and open and closed a lot. So I haven't been able to be consistent at the gym lifting weights. I used to do group fitness classes, and uh, I'd be lifting weights in those uh, classes. But because I haven't been able to do that, I've sort of switched gears. And also because the weather is beautiful, I can yes. get outside now and I can run. So I've been running. Uh, I walk with Chris yeah. and Arden everywhere. Um, I dance, we dance in the kitchen. We're always, you know, dancing around, having fun. Yeah. And uh, Chris is also teaching Rard and I how to skateboard. So that is quite the adventure. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So the next one is about people who actually hate exercising. They hate the idea of fitness. Um, I'm kind of that way. I don't like thinking about the activities that I'm doing as I'm going to exercise today. I want to get fit. Those things don't fall into my mindset and there's a lot of you out there. So um, found the best way to kind of deal with those things is find the thing you hate the least. 
right? So you could be an individual that's like, I don't like walking, I don't like biking, I don't like dancing or whatever. Like it could be so many multitudes of things that you're not a fan of doing and that's okay. But you still feel like you want to be active, you want to be healthy, you want to get your body moving every day. Pick the thing that you le least hate. Um, it's a good way for you to just start out doing things and you'll probably find that you're enjoying that type of movement more than you ever have before or it will lead you in pathways into other types of keeping your body active and moving that you might not have really explored before and you enjoy those for sure so just choose whatever is most tolerable even <laughs> if you hate yes. moving your body and fitness and physical activity um yeah just choose the thing that you can stand can tolerate can manage can fit into your day yeah I would never jump into doing burpees, for instance. Ryden and I do burpees together. Yeah, I don't get that. <laughs> it's fun. It's fun for us. Related to that is walking. So if you're someone who hates exercise and you think you need to like run a marathon in order to be fit, first of all, that's not the case. You do not have to run a marathon. You don't have to run at all. You can do other activities and walking is very good for you. Walking is highly underrated. Getting your steps in is great for you. And if you like going for walks, then cool. Go for walks, enjoy nature. If you find walking dull, walk to somewhere, walk to a destination. Maybe Chris can speak more on this because yes. I'm more likely to just go for a run or go for a walk. But for Chris, it's a little different. I don't see the point in walking in a big circle around my neighborhood. Um, I know that there's a point to it. I do. I get that the idea of movement and being active in some way is very good for you. And as Meg said, walking is underrated. It moves a lot of muscle groups and it gets you breathing a little bit more and all these good stuff, all these good things. But I would not walk in a circle. The only time I do that is if I'm out with my family and we just want to enjoy the time together. If I'm walking on my own, I need a destination. Okay. It doesn't need to be some big deal. I just need to know that I'm going somewhere and I'm coming back from that spot. It could be as simple as, you know what? This morning, I'm gonna walk over to the coffee shop, get my coffee and walk back home and enjoy it along the way, rather than just making a cup at home. That way I get that little bit of movement into my day right away. Another way you can make movement more exciting if you're finding it dull, so whether it's walking or whether it's another activity, is listening to music. Music can really put you in a good headspace and a good mood. Listen to your favorite music that gets you really pumped up. You could listen to podcasts. You can arrange to go with a family member or a friend, depending on COVID restrictions in your area. Yeah, audiobooks are great in this also, and they're often available from digital library sources, like your public library. Um, so you don't actually have to pay anything, which is a great way to get some something going on while you're out exercising a little bit. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Incorporate daily movement into your daily life. So if the thought of creating an exercise routine or a program or something like that is really intimidating. A good way to get daily movement in is to just incorporate it into your daily life. So if you're able to walk to places when you're doing errands or- Going to appointments, even yeah. if it's work related, that's yeah. great. If you can walk or cycle to places or just find a more active way of getting there. With uh, Riordan, it's scootering and skateboarding at this point. Yeah. If you're not able to do that, because obviously that's not accessible for everybody, uh, you can also set reminders on your phone to move your body. It's a good reminder to get your body moving and you'll see that reminder on your phone and, oh, okay, I need to take mm -hmm. a minute. It doesn't have to be a long, you know, an extended period of time, but I need to take a minute to stretch or to walk around or just to move my body a little bit. And um, that can be really helpful in getting, getting going and getting mm -hmm. moving. I realize many people have heard this before, but other very simple ways, park your vehicle further away from the entrance to the location you're going. 
Yeah, or get off your bus or whatever transportation you're taking. Get off a stop or two early. Yep. Schedule the time in so that you have the extra time to get a little walk in. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Or taking stairs instead of elevators and escalators. Mm -hmm. Any little way that you can incorporate more movement into your day. And it doesn't seem like a big deal really in the moment. And if you just start with one thing, and you get used to, let's say, taking the stairs instead of the elevator. And then over time, it's like, okay, what else can I incorporate? What else, how else can I mm -hmm. boost my movement throughout the day? So next thing we want as a tip is just to say, start really small, yeah, especially if you're a person that does little to no activities at all. So it can be really simple, like just dancing through the duration of your favorite song. And it can be goofy dancing, like just shaking your butt or something. <laughs> Any movement is excellent. Um, another thing, this one really applies to me. I love watching television. I like playing video games and watching television, Netflix, etc. A great way to do it is if there's an advertisement or, you know what, just stop it for a minute. Do three jumping jacks and sit back down. Or do a really quick plank, right? Uh, another great option is most people have to get up to use the bathroom every now and again. On your way back from the bathroom, decide to do some lean knee lifts. Or, you know, when you get back to the sofa, drop, do three push-ups, hop back up, sit down, get your cup of coffee, you're ready to chill again. Yeah. Little things, very small things can make a big difference. And they add up. And if you get into the routine of doing those things day over day, then they really add up over a week and a month and, um, over time. Any movement, any exercise is better than no exercise. So you might think, oh, doing these little things like, oh, it's it's a plank or, oh, it's one, a couple of push-ups and you might think oh, it's not even worth doing. It totally is worth doing. Um, it gets you into that mindset of thinking about moving your body more and more than, more often than not, if I do these things, like if I go for a bathroom break, come back, drop, do 10 push-ups, and I've worked my way up to 10 push-ups. For the longest time, I could not even do a push-up from my toes. It was knee push-ups all the way. But now I can do 10 in a row, which is awesome for me. It's really cool. But more often than not, if I do those 10 push-ups, I'm more likely to stay on the floor and do something else, or hop up and do a few squats or lunges or something. And so it kind of, once you start moving your body, you might want to keep moving your body. It kind of builds that momentum. Yeah. And even if you don't, even if you just do what you set out to do, you do that one plank or those five jumping jacks or whatever you decided on, give yourself a pat on the back. That's awesome. It's a great way to get started. And then hopefully over time you can build on it. Another really important thing about fitness and movement is scheduling it in. So if you are opting for an activity like running or walking where you need to actually have a bit of time to do it, you need to schedule it into your day and make time for it because it's very easy with our busy, hectic, chaotic, crazy lives to just say exercise. I don't have time for exercise. Who has time for exercise? Seriously, I have a life to live. And you throw your hands up and it's just like, I have this and that and the other and work and kids mm -hmm. and family and X, Y, Z and so many different responsibilities. So it's very easy to just throw in the towel and say, I, I don't have time for this. I just don't have time. And I, in certain instances that that is valid and it's um, it can be difficult to make the time for it. But if you schedule it in and if you start small and, you know, start with your five minutes, yeah. 10 minutes, I'm sure you can take five minutes out of your day to do something. Schedule it in. <laughs> <laughs> I like schedules. Uh, yeah, Meg is far more uh, an administrative organizational type personality than I am. I think if you're watching this, you can probably even tell just by our postures up straight. So I'd chill. really much rather be sitting like this right now. Yeah, but that makes me look short. We're the same height. We really are. But I don't sit <laughs> like this. We look the same height when I, we both sit up tall. I know. That's the point because anyway, we are. Posture side note. Posture side note. Um, in honesty, Meg has got the healthier version. But uh, I'm not a person that would schedule it into my life. I really, really struggle with that. For me, I find the simplest way is if I think of it, do it immediately. 
Um, you know, sometimes we have calisthenic bars out in our living room. And when they're out right in the middle of the floor, I use them every time I walk by them. I, I do use that, them. I do that on purpose. Yeah. I use them or I ride and wants to use them because he plays around with them as well. And I'll just leave them out. Yeah. That's not scheduled for me. No. It's, oh, hey, that's there. I can do some, uh, some lifts. Yeah. And I don't say anything. No. I don't, there's no pressure if he doesn't want to do it. It's fine. But I leave them out because I know that if they're out, chances are he'll be like, hey, calisthenics bars let's mm -hmm. go and he'll do you know he'll do a few things yeah and this kind of feeds into our next point our next point is about being consistent and whether you're a scheduling type of person or a non-scheduled <laughs> type of person finding that way that works for you and, and keeps it simplest for you and being consistent in that is going to pay off and it, and it goes back to the previous point with starting small consistent small efforts really add up so consistency i would say is is honestly my my home run point here definitely yeah absolutely and if something gets in your way you know life happens sometimes and you know sometimes you can't be consistent for whatever reason and at that point i'd say reevaluate what the activity is or what your schedule look like looks like and try to um come up with a different way to incorporate it into your day. So whether that means switching the activity to something different or maybe shortening the time frame, or getting in your exercise first thing in the morning versus lunchtime, like all these little tweaks that you can think about to um, develop that consistency and make it work for your life. Yes, absolutely. Like I said before, whatever is gonna work for you. It took me experimentation to figure out that I shouldn't schedule it at all and just do it when I think of it. All right. All right, the next one is trick yourself into it. So this might sound kind of weird if you've never thought about this before, but one way that I like to think about this is think about future you. So present you might have a certain desire to stay in bed for an extra 20 minutes or watch Netflix for half an hour. Or, just, just one more episode, it's fine. Yeah, or whatever the case may be, right? Because in that moment, you just wanna do what's easy, what's simple, what you're already doing. And I like to think about future me and what future me would think if I take that 20 minutes and stay in bed, or I take that 20 minutes and I go for a run. And occasionally, Staying in bed is a good option. If I'm not feeling well, if I didn't sleep well the night before, that's completely valid. But more often than not, I know that future me will be very happy if I go for a run. And if I just stay in bed, I'll be a little disappointed in myself and oh, I probably should have headed out for a run this morning. You don't work that way. No. <laughs> no, I don't. If I were going to trick myself into doing something physically active, I would probably put my car keys in a spot that I never put them in. Like, almost hide them on myself. Like, it's the middle of the summer and I put them inside a winter jacket pocket the night before. So I don't think to look there the next morning. Then when I get up in the morning and it's like, oh man, I have to uh, go to work. Or I have to do whatever my errand is of that day. I don't really have the option to take the car anymore. So I'm walking, I'm skateboarding, I'm bicycling because I've kind of put myself forcefully into that action. Interesting. That's interesting. Maybe it would be more effective if I hid the keys because then I know where they are. I hide them and then you're forced to have that, that extra time and do it. That just sounds malicious to me. But I'm just then, kidding. But you can't really hide keys on yourself because you'll know where they are, won't you? Yeah, but it's like... The Is whole, it just a game? Like a yeah, mental... it's like a mental okay. game. Like you're, you're messing with yourself. It's like your whole... I'm going to get dressed like I'm going to exercise, but I don't really feel like yeah. exercising thing. This is another great way to trick yourself into exercising. And I used to do this for going to the gym, and I do it sometimes now when I'm wanting to go out for a run, but at the same time, not really wanting to go out for a run. So I'll tell myself, I don't have to go for a run, but I'm going to put on all my running gear. So I'll put on my leggings and my tank top and whatever, and lace up my sneakers. And that's all I have to do. If I still don't want to run after that, I don't have to. 
I don't think there has been a single time that I have put on all the gear, gone to the trouble of putting my sneakers on and not gone out the door and gone for a run. It just works. Just it works, works for me. I don't know if it'll work for you, but it has definitely worked for me to trick myself into it sometimes. Side note to this is take a break when you need it. Like don't be too oh, yeah. hard on yourself if you need a break. If you're injured or super achy or yeah, just ill be or, kind to yourself you know like if you just else. need a, a rest day yep. take a rest day rest days are also very important and very valid yes final thing and this encompasses everything we've said and more just have fun yeah. right like i don't know think of when you were a child and the things that you had fun doing I can tell you from my personal experience as a 35 year old man, doing the things that I enjoyed as a kid still feel fun, right? And it's uh, a throwback. It's yeah. fun to sort of think like about that. what you were doing back then and yeah. then you're doing it now. It's, it's fun. Yeah, there's that nostalgia vibe that you get mm -hmm. and it feels good. Yeah. Um, so just have fun. I mean, we went out for a wander skateboarding. We went over to the park today. And for fun, I ran up a really big hill and ran back down the really big hill really fast just because I thought it would feel fun. And it was. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. Play. Just because you're an adult doesn't mean that you stop playing. A lot of adults do. Mm -hmm. they, they don't play. They, they think, you know, playing for kids, whatever. But if you can make your activities really fun and enjoyable and playful and you know, have fun with your partner or have fun with your kids or um, even if you're on your own, like blast your music or do something fun that you used to do as a kid, like uh, you skateboard and do things yeah. like that that you did as a kid and you still do now. And another thing related to this is try something new. Chris is teach. I mentioned this before, Chris is teaching Riordan and I how to skateboard and I have never ridden a skateboard in my life it's the furthest thing from what I am familiar or comfortable doing in terms of physical activity. I can walk, I can now run after quite a bit of training and work on that. I, I have danced my whole life, but skateboarding is not a thing that I am good at and is not something I've ever had experience doing. But it is so much fun to play with and experiment and try and I'm getting the hang of it slowly but surely and I'm being safe and I'm you know taking it easy I'm not going in the rain I'm not going in <laughs> flip-flops I'm you know I'm being as safe as possible but yeah it's super fun so maybe trying something new whether that's any activity it could, it yoga, could be anything. dance, swimming, biking, any activity, a sport, anything. Yeah there are some what I deem odd or unusual sports out there that have actually piqued my interest lately. Hmm. Like, uh, like frolf, like frisbee golf. Somehow I think that would be fun to me. I don't know why, but I think I'm going to try it. Another when one that, COVID's not a thing anymore, yeah. maybe we'll show you some frolfing. We'll, we'll, fro we'll <laughs> frolf in the backfield here. I don't know. We have a friend, he does something called pickleball. Oh, yeah. It's like a racket sport. I, I don't, I'd never heard of it. He was telling me about it. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, cool, cool, man. Do you play your pickleball? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> anyway, have fun. Try something new if that's going to be fun for you. Think of what it was like being a kid. When you're a kid, you're active. You don't even think about it. Just play. Yep. Have fun. Do what works for you. Those are kind of the bottom line. Yeah bottom line around the whole fitness and exercise situation cool thank you so much for watching we hope you enjoyed this video and found it helpful give it a like if you liked the video subscribe below if you haven't already and hit the little notification bell to be notified anytime we upload a new video thank you so much for all of your support on the channel we really appreciate it and we'll talk to you soon bye, bye.